Good afternoon. Um, I'd like to begin by acknowledging that uh, this is the land of the Coast Salish people, and I'm pleased to be able to uh, uh, conduct business with you on their traditional territory. As mentioned, I'm a member of the Cascadena. Uh, we are a northern group in the province. Prince George is not north. I mean, we're 16 hours north of Prince George. Uh, so you can uh, imagine where we're at, right on the border of the Yukon. And the, um, I remember the, the, the Dena are the largest Aboriginal group in Canada, North America. Uh, we occupy <clears throat> almost all of Alaska, the Northwest Territories, the Yukon, uh, Northern British Columbia, Alberta, uh, Saskatchewan, down into Manitoba, and then down into uh, as far away as uh, New Mexico with the Apache and the Navajo, as well being a, uh, members of the of the of the Dena family. Now, this this, this form doesn't really invite itself to reading prepared texts. I uh, I was given some texts to, to uh, deliver to you on behalf of the uh, regional chief of British Columbia, Sean Adlio who's asked me to, uh, to speak on his behalf. Um, but there's a couple of things I want to talk about. Uh, the first speaker uh, stole one of my uh, themes, which is the mountain pine beetle. Um, as he indicated in his earlier remarks, uh, there's a, a climate change is happening in British Columbia as we speak. And our communities are on the front line uh, of uh, that climate change with the explosion on, of the mountain pine beetle. Uh, there are 203 First Nations communities in British Columbia. 103 of those communities are within the mountain pine beetle area. And we are going to feel those effects more than anyone else. As the uh, after lunch speaker indicated, it's largely uh, the poor members of our communities without the capacity to respond that are going to feel the most impact. And, and the fact is that we live in the bush. Uh, we're on, we live around those rivers, those lakes, and those mountains where most of other people live here in the lower mainland. Yeah, and, but we're, we're the ones that occupy our traditional territories uh, throughout British Columbia, and we continue to rely on the resources that the land gives to us. Uh, so we are going to feel a tremendous impact. Uh, we're feeling it now, and we, work, we will continue to feel it. There's going to be significant changes in our communities. The other speaker talked about is uh, the as a result of the pine beetle epidemic, um, there has been uh, and added to the, the economic meltdown and lack of houses and uh, house building in the United States, the forest economy, which many of our small communities depend on, is basically dead. And there are massive unemployment that we're already experiencing. And there's also going to be some tremendous environmental impacts. A lot of our communities, uh, you know, given people's access to uh, Jimmy Patterson's uh, Urban Fair or whatever, the supermarkets, all of the things that you have here in the lower mainland, many of our communities still go out in the bush. They go out there for berries, they go out there for medicine, they go out there for food, uh, and they go there for cultural, spiritual reasons. While that world is changing rapidly. And the, we're already seeing uh, invasive new species that are coming in to, to our traditional territories. With the lack of canopy cover in a lot of the lakes and the rivers and the streams, the fisheries are going to be impacted. The fur bears, which a lot of our people uh, trap for uh, economic reasons, they are also going to change because the forest is going to be gone. And I think what is most alarming is the fact that uh, we have a basically, uh, we've got the interior northern part of the province sitting there as a massive tinderbox uh, ready to go up in flames. 
I mean, we watch the uh, the brush fires in California uh, every night on TV recently. I mean, if one of these, if a forest fire gets away in British North, in the interior northern part of British Columbia, you know, it would be catastrophic to say the least. We've estimated that to be able to protect those communities, uh, there is a required expenditure of $135 million. And that's to be able to build the necessary buffer zones around those communities uh, to prevent uh, fire ravaging the communities in terms of the homes, the people, the infrastructure. Uh, to date, um, successive governments in Ottawa have promised a billion dollars to help uh, offset uh, and deal with and adapt to uh, the changes that the Pine Beetle devastation has brought to us. Uh, we've virtually seen none of that money in our communities, a mere pittance uh, of the billion dollars. But yes, we are seeing bridges being built with that money. We are seeing roads being constructed. We are seeing airports being expanded. What do airports have with pine, to do with pine beetles? Maybe, you know, better place to land uh, in the province to access the, the forest. What do bridges have to do with pine beetles? Maybe keep them get wet when they cross the rivers. <laughs> so there has been a, a perversion uh, of the management, uh, a very perverse attitude toward the allocation of those resources. And, and basically they were <clears throat> utilized to uh, to enhance the electability of uh, <coughs> members of the government back to office. Uh, Dick Hill and <coughs> Jay Hill and, and all of those folks uh, up in the northern uh, parts of British Columbia. And the government uh, in Ottawa is simply not serious uh, in our view <coughs> about dealing with this issue. Uh, we cannot say that uh, that statement does not apply to the province of British Columbia. Uh, they have been working uh, hand in hand with us We've uh, worked uh, diligently uh, to develop <coughs> common approaches, strategies. Uh, we have a uh, common funding program that we've hammered out on a bilateral basis in the province. <coughs> we've submitted that to Ottawa. But despite uh, the, the rhetoric of uh, Ottawa's new government, um, which is now uh, in its second stage, it's a bit old now, uh, their mantra of, well, communities know best. In this instance, they're saying, we in Ottawa know best, and we are not transferring any of this money to British Columbia. We will manage and determine the priorities in Ottawa. So you can see more money for, for um, the mining oil and gas industry uh, being spent out of the pine beetle uh, envelope. Um, but we need Ottawa to get serious, because uh, we are, as I stated, uh, going to receive uh, a tremendous impact. The other area I'd like to touch on briefly is uh, <clears throat> the boreal forest. As you know, um, the boreal forest stretches from one end of Canada to, to the other. And it is one of the largest intact ancient forests in the world. And I believe at the present time the boreal forests uh, throughout the world, it also not, is not only Canada, but Alaska, Russia, and Scandinavia. We're talking about a forest uh, that has been referred to as the lungs of the earth, storing up to 22% of the total carbon on the earth's land surface. And uh, my plea there is that uh, we've got to uh, make some uh, changes, we've got to make some decisions into keeping the boreal intact. Um, there's been a recent decision by Premier Dalton McGuinty in Ontario in which he has agreed, he and his government have agreed to set aside 225,000 square kilometers of northern Ontario from logging. And uh, for that decision, he was recognized by the Canadian Boreal Initiative and the Canadian Boreal Council uh, and for, for that decision. We need more of those kinds of decisions. Uh, to be able to, to protect the uh, boreal uh, forests of British Columbia and uh, throughout Canada. And one of the concerns is that if this is another warm winter, <clears throat> that boreal forest may well be impacted by the pine beetle. There is a, a possibility that the pine beetle could spread right throughout the boreal, right to Labrador. And uh, so 
those are the couple of the issues that I wanted to uh, address to you here today and uh, hopefully uh, we'll engage you further in uh, the dialogue session. Merci.